What is going on my broskies? My name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video. We're back here with another One Piece video and we're going to be covering the brand new treasure map that just dropped on Global which is versus the Wiper treasure map. What you guys are seeing here is Nav level 20. Remember in this treasure map things are a little bit different um, with the way that it's structured as you only encounter the intrusion battle on the every fifth level. Every time you encounter a secret map that is when an intrusion battle will take place. Now they have altered it in such a way where you actually will get more points in total. At least that's what I've found through playing the event as you're clearing the maps a lot faster as you're not encountering a an intrusion battle every single map. You know, you're only encountering it every five and that means a lot of animations that you typically have to go through are not going to be present in all of the other maps. And adding an additional fight does actually add a lot of additional time per run. So you're going to be reaching these higher nav levels a lot faster, which ultimately gives you more points. And these intrusion battles are going to give you a lot of points as well, as they've upped the number of points that each of the bosses will give you. And when you actually play an intrusion battle map, you will land on the bird, which gives you an additional 1.5 times points. So overall, I think it actually does work out for the better for more people out there. But we'll wait and see how things progress throughout this event period here. Talking more about this intrusion battle, interestingly, I did talk about the defense up remover supports on the team. Um, they don't actually need to be on the team because they only activate when the enemy applies the buff to themselves. But on battle two, when you actually enter the room, the enemies already have it active, so the supports don't actually trigger, which is interesting. Another thing that's interesting to note is that on battle four, the boss does not increase his HP with every time you encounter them. So he stays at a flat 2 million HP on battle four, which means clearing it is very, very easy. Battle 5, though, will increase in HP every time you encounter it, and I believe at this level here, at level 20, he had around 20 million HP, which is actually a lot. The scaling is absurd at level 5, but at least all of the bosses beforehand are actually pretty straightforward and aren't really too tricky. Of course, you want to be aiming to use the treasure map Rare Recruit Enervu as your friend captain as his special and his super class or super type special help you wave clear the first two stages a lot easier. So I definitely keep that in mind when you are playing through this map. You, you know, using that Enervu is very, very key for this fight. And interestingly enough, as you guys would have seen, the despair actually does get inflicted to you first. So versus Yamato as the captain, he is actually really good as she will remove all of the despair for you and you don't even have to bring a character to remove it which is really really strong you get despaired first then you are binded and then your captain is switched out so you can actually you know build your team in such a way that you don't even have to bring certain specials to get around the gimmicks Moving on now to the battle rush, the first one is going to be versus Konus, and this team is essentially, you know, the same sort of team that I was um, showing you guys in the previous videos, in the shorts video that I uploaded, using Sugar as the captain, and we're also using the main boosts with Uta as she provides buffs to um, Shooter and Cerebral, and everyone on this team is Shooter and Cerebral, except for the Big Mom and the Daifuku. Daifuku is here for wave clearing, and Big Mom is here because she is so good for this fight, as she removes essentially everything on the final stage because we have a driven captain she actually does change the block salt into matching for us as well unfortunately she does give us a chain lock but i mean at the end of the day it's not that big of a difference uh, in the long run it probably will hurt us uh, on this stage but i don't think it's going to matter too much uta's boosts are so significant and then the support of chopper does give us some quick color affinity and remember that the toy soldiers do not hit perfect so we don't even have to worry about the burn at all and we don't even need a damage reducing effect because we have so much HP we can just tank the death hit anyway. The second Battle Rush boss is versus Garnfor, and this one is also very easy so long as you have versus Kaido as one of the captains. It doesn't matter which one, you can have it be your captain or your friend captain. It doesn't really matter because the special of Kaido essentially carries this quest. 
Also, Black Maria is very, very useful as she can remove the five turns of Rainbow Shield. There is actually six turns of Rainbow Shield though, which is why we have Law and Kid, because they help us wave clear stage two, and they give us a chain boundary for stage three, but also we can have the support of the free to play killer that came out earlier on in 2022, which will remove one turn of Rainbow Shield on the last stage. So that plus the Black Maria removes all of that. Black Maria does also give us color affinity, which means that Kaido is just going to be hitting way harder. So this team versus Rocky, this is the one that I was trying to wrap my head around the most because I initially was going with Roger and then I switched him out for something else, which you guys would have seen in my shorts clip, but then I changed it back to Roger because we found out that there's actually mob characters on that stage. Now, if you don't have 6 plus Roger yet, it's not the end of the world. You can just make sure that you keep both of your Roger specials for the last stage and then use both of the Rogers on the last stage to wave clear all of these mobs. It makes it very, very easy. We do use Izo and Okiku for wave clear and it does provide us with a chain lock when we reach the last stage. We do have the support of the treasure map legend Sanji attached to Roger so that we can get an orb boosting effect for our Psy characters. Definitely not required. We have a couple of key supports to remove additional attack down so with the supports plus the chopper special we can remove all the attack down we get the blindness removal and then we can just go ahead and clear rocky pretty simply <laughs> The final Battle Rush team versus Luffy is pretty straightforward once again as well. Um, Law and Kid that you guys would have seen in the Garn 4 team that I was using is very good for this fight here. Uh, mainly because of the chain boundary that they provide. You can use their special on stage 2, carry into the last stage. It's absolutely not a problem. What I'm doing instead is I'm going to be using the Clash Crocodile, which says that if we have a Striker or a Cerebral Captain when we launch his special, and he's also good for wave clearing, he also provides three turns of a chain boundary. Now, it's not a very significant chain boundary. I think it's a 2.0 chain boundary, which is still pretty good for, you know, the cases that we need it for here. Yamato resists the despair. Yamato special gives us orbs and all of the boosting effects. And then we have the chain boundary to not even have a care in the world about the chain debuffs. And then we can go ahead and have a look at the final boss versus Wiper. And of course, we are using essentially the, the main boosters. You know, nothing really too out of the ordinary here. We are using Who's Who on the team because he is a very high point booster. He's the same level of point boost as versus Yamato versus Kaido, Nami, and Robin. So we are able to use him here because, you know, we're using versus Yamato in the previous team. So he's just kind of here as a filler unit who gives us a lot of points. Once again, using Eneru as the friend captain provides a lot of beneficial buffs for the crew. And also using the very, very key support here of the, the uh, Usopp attached to the Nami. It's a very, very, very good effect. Alternatively, you could use an effect uh, such as the Mr. One and Miss Doublefinger attached to Robin. That will also work in your favor to remove those paralysis slots. Um, if you don't have a way to get around the paralysis slots, you can just tap with them. They are counted as neutral slots if I do... I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure that's correct that they are counted as neutral slots So it's not the end of the world even if you have to attack with them um, But ultimately obviously it is better to use a paralysis reducing effect and then you can just get matching slots out of that We do have the VV and the Rager support attached to the two boosters to ensure that we get a type of boost out of them Not the end of the world if we don't get it though We can use Nami in the previous stage because we do get inflicted with paralysis so we can have her special ready for the final stage once again Super class to remove the threshold and give us a conditional boost and and then we're pretty much good as gravy. So that is pretty much going to wrap it up for me for the treasure map run through using uh, all of my boosted teams. And hopefully you can take some inspiration from some of these teams to help you improve your teams. And I wish you guys the best of luck in your treasure map grind throughout the month of January. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with all the content I post, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Other than that, I'll see you guys within the next video.